Today we are doing a side-by-side -side video autofocus test and comparison from the Sony a7 II and the Sony a7 III. We have the same shot, same exposure, same color grading, so let's find out the differences. So welcome back to my channel, I hope you're doing good and yes, we all know the answer. The Sony a7 III has better video autofocus, no doubts about that. But how much of a difference is it in comparison to the Sony a7 II? Is it worth upgrading to the a7 III or should you stick to the a7 II and save 1000 euros and buy for example another lens? This is what we are talking about on my channel because I just made the upgrade to the a7 III and I owned the a7 II for the last two or almost three years. And I can tell you, in some cases, you can stick to the a7 II because it is still a great camera. But in today's video, we are focusing on the video autofocus comparison. So let's go. All right, for today's setup, I have Claire again. Hello. She's going to walk in the frame and then we can see how the focus works. And the plan is easy. We have three rounds. In the first one, we have the side-by-side -side comparison with both lenses at 28 mm. But because this is not too hard for the autofocus, we have two single rounds with the 28 to 75 mm on each camera, zoomed to 75 mm. But we will come to this later. So now we start the first test and I ask you, Claire, to walk into the frame right now. And now can you come a little bit closer? Closer, closer, closer. And just stand there and go a little bit in the left frame and to the right. Okay, so we can keep the focus pretty good. Both cameras doing a good job. Now can you turn around a little bit? Yes. A little bit back and forwards walking. Yes, nice, nice. A little bit closer to the cameras. Awesome. And now again, a little bit backwards, forwards, kind of changing the speed. Yeah, great. All right, now turn around and go back. Yes. Okay, so I think there we have a clear... Okay, stop, right. <laughs> there we have a clear... Um, different from both of these cameras and now you can come towards the cameras again till I say stop come 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 and stop yes. and a little bit back okay now we see a7 II got huge issues do we get the focus back and uh, we get the focus back <laughs> all right so I think that's it for the first test and again, 28 millimeters are not that hard for the autofocus, so you want to make sure to wait for the 75 millimeter test. But before we talk about the focus, I noticed that the exact same exposed images looked different. With the Sony a7 II, we have much more yellow tones and the a7 III way more magenta. And yes, the white balance was set both to daylight. And yes, also you can correct this in the post-production and I actually only used the very, very basic color grading, which was actually only saturation and contrast up and then adjustment only slightly in the primary wheels. So nothing crazy and just, just leaving it pretty natural. Now regarding the autofocus, we clearly saw where the Sony a7 II had some big issues and that the a7 III did a better job on that. But overall, I have to admit that for example, here in this shot, the a7 III is way sharper in the details than in the Sony a7 II image. And it is about preferences. But I actually like this look from the a7 II here, because it kind of looks more cinematic to me. But again, you could also achieve a cinematic look with the a7 III by grading it correctly. And also, when Claire is closer to the cameras, I do prefer the Sony a7 III shot because it's sharper. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you can actually change the autofocus speed from the Sony a7 III to either slow, normal or fast, while you don't have this option on the a7 II. And for this test I left it at normal. But now to spice up the things we are going to directly start with the 75mm and the Sony a7 II. So now we are going to start the second test and we have two different videos, but we are going to do it similar. So now you can walk in the frame, Claire, and turn around. Yes, keep, keep that. 
Stay there. We're still getting the focus. Okay, and now we are here. Can you come a little bit closer and stop? Yeah, stay there. And walk just slightly to the left and to the right and to the right. All right. Could you now turn around and spin a little bit, just like that, forward, backwards. Okay, so we have huge struggles. I can already see it on the display. And now turn around and go away. No focus at all. <laughs> a little bit further. Go, go, yes. Okay. And stay there. And now come back. Yes. Come, 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 come. And getting slower. And stay there. All right. And now go out of the frame. And focus bumps. <laughs> All right. That's it for the first one. And now without further ado, we will directly switch the cameras to the a7 III and 75mm test. So now we are going to start the last video and you can walk into the frame, Claire. And turn around. Yeah, stay there. All right. <laughs> Looking good. And come to me, come towards me and stop. And now just stay there, go a little bit into the left frame and to the right. Perfect. And now can you turn around a little bit? Yeah, just spin forward, backwards. Okay. Also some issues here, but overall the focus is quite nice. And now turn around and go away. Okay, I would say this was much better than a little bit wider. Further. Yes, and stop. And now come back. And slowly, slower. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Smile. And I think we are done. You can go out of the frame. And there we go. That's it. So from these tests we can see a clear difference from the Sony a7 II and the Sony a7 III. The a7 III is just way more reliable and it's a game changer when it comes to filming yourself. It just makes the whole filmmaking life way more easier because you have one thing less to care about. I can for example just come this close to the camera right now and I'm pretty sure that I am in focus. And probably the audio is 10 times better right now because I only have this shotgun mic on my camera and can't record the audio other way. So let's just finish this video here. Okay, I was just kidding. But I have two more things that I want to mention. First one, yes, the Sony a7 III had some issues when it comes to filming on 75mm in real portrait mode. But it was still way more reliable than with the a7 II. And also for stuff like this right now, it's a huge game changer because I had it several times with the Sony a7 II that I just filmed myself standing here talking towards the camera and I just lost focus and I had nothing else to do but to redo it again or using crap footage. The second thing is about focus bumps and in the very last sequence from the 75mm test you saw how the focus reacts when the subject moves out of the frame and the 7 II is just like Oh my god, what's happening? I don't know what to do, I'm confused. <laughs> and the a7 III was just smoothly focusing on the white area and you had a sharp image. So all in all, the a7 III is just way more reliable when it comes to video out of focus. There are no doubts about that. And to anyone who really wants to do something in the videography in a professional way, I can highly recommend to go with the a7 III. But now, I have to pack my things because actually my last days here in Paris just arrived and I'm leaving in two days. I'm getting back to Germany. But well, I have prepared some last words for you, so here you go. And now to conclude this video, I hope it was helpful for you and maybe you just got some information and know better which camera you are going for. If you save thousand bucks and go for the a7 II or if you should go with the a7 III directly. And 
in this point I have to say I never had really issues when it comes to only photography with the Sony a7 II. But now, especially for videography, I am very happy to have the upgrade to the a7 III. And with this said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I see you guys in the next one.